Okay, so I'm going to um, just work out a couple of these problems. Um, somebody asked if I would just work them and post them, so I, I'm going to. So I'll have to refer back, and maybe I'll actually just write them down real quick. So I'm going to take a look at this um, first problem that we have, this 1 over x squared plus 1. And I want to take a look at it in the context that we're saying, like we want to find horizontal asymptotes um, for the function, right? So let me do that. Once I'm writing down these other problems real quick. Okay, so I want to just divide top and bottom by um, this largest degree or I mean some of you were asking me in class if you could kind of just do this um, like with the reasoning that we had used I mean this is a graph of 1 over x squared shifted to the left by 1 so I think you could really do this pretty fine graphically because we established in class that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x squared um, was equal to 0, right? And so shifting this to the left or right should not change that limit. Oh, oops, sorry. Um, but if you wanted it to do it, so one thing is to look at that and to kind of establish this graphically. But if you want to just take a look at this limit and like try the techniques that we were talking about today, uh, you would get 1 over x squared over 1 plus 1 over x squared if I divide everywhere by 0, and I want to make sure that I have this limit as x goes to infinity, right? And then the numerator here goes to 0, so this piece, I'm going to write these in red. This piece goes to 0, this piece also goes to 0, and I get the form 0 over 1. So if I'm using the quotient rule from those limit rules, 0 over 1, which is just equal to 0. So I have a horizontal asymptote of this function, and it's the line y is equal to 0. Okay? Okay. Um, and then I have this second function. Let's see. f of x is 3x squared minus 2x over 7x squared plus 5 right? And I'm going to do the same thing. Take the limit as x goes to infinity. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to divide everywhere here by x squared. So I get 3 on in the numerator and in the denominator. Minus 2, oh, it should be 2 over x, right? Over 7 plus 5 over x. And the limit as x goes to infinity, again, these pieces go to 0. And so that should be equal to 3 sevenths, <coughs> right? By the quotient rule and by, I'm using the sum and difference rules here. Um, so again, the horizontal asymptote of this function is y is equal to 3 sevenths. Okay, now this same reasoning, I don't expect this reasoning to change if I were to look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity. These values that I'm saying go to 0 will still go to 0 even though x is getting really negative. Um, so this should be the horizontal, two-sided horizontal asymptote. Okay, okay, now. Um, this, when I look at f of x is equal to 4x squared plus 3x minus 7 over 2x plus 5. Um, and I divide through by the biggest exponent. So you get 4 plus 3 over x minus 7 over x squared. And this is going towards, <clears throat> or when I take this limit, I get the form 4 over 0. And really what's happening is I have maybe a 
um, a form on top that this piece is moving towards 4, the limit here is 4, and the limit here is moving towards a number that it gets smaller and smaller. So I'm dividing 4 by a smaller and smaller number, or something that's relatively consistent to 4. And so this number should be getting bigger, <clears throat> right? And I kind of see that kind of intuitively when I say, like, the thing that will control this top polynomial is this x squared piece, and the piece that will control the bottom polynomial is 2x. And so x squared will just grow much faster than x, so I expect this growth to be linear. But so this limit, as x goes to infinity, of f of x definitely should be equal to infinity, right? You can see that also, this should have a slant asymptote. Do you see the degrees are just one difference from each other and the degree on um, top is bigger? So I'm going to set up that um, problem. And then to get to, like, my question is, what do I multiply by 2x to get 4x squared? And I have to multiply by 2 and then an x. So I get 4x squared plus <clears throat> 10x. Change signs to subtract. And I'll get the 4x squareds cancel. That's good. If they don't cancel, you've done something wrong. Negative 7x minus 7. I'm going to be very careful, but catch me if you see errors, but y'all aren't here with me. Okay, and then the question is, what do I multiply by 2x to get 7x, right? And so, oh, maybe it has to be a negative, right? Because I want it, the result to be negative, so that's one thing. So I have a 2 here that I want to get rid of, so I'm going to build a fraction. To get rid of the 2, I'm going to divide by this 2. Right, so right now it's like times one half, so I have a one x, and then to get the seven in, I'm going to multiply by a seven. Right, so I get minus seven x, and then oh gosh, this is minus thirty five over two. Is that what y'all got? And then I'm going to change signs, plus n plus. Okay, I'm going to check that. That should be. Yep, and 35 over 2. Okay, and now maybe on the side, I'm going to say that this is 14 over 2, just in my head. Maybe some of y'all did that in the he your head. But that should be 35 minus 14, which should be, did y'all get 21 over 2? Check this. Okay, and I would say, I think that this is okay. I'm trying to be careful. Um, but so I want to make sure that you know how to write this. So this piece here is the big piece is the oblique asymptote. So oblique is this quotient. And really the equality that I have for the division problem, 4x squared plus 3x minus 7 over 2x plus 5. That is 2x minus 7 halves, and then, then I put the remainder over the original denominator. Okay, that's how this goes. So I get, this is the quotient, right? The answer of the division problem. So I get 2x minus 7 over 2 plus, let's say, 21 halves all over this 2x plus 5. And I will probably write this more kind of naturally. 21 over 2 times 2x plus 5. Maybe something like that, right? So that I can see this original thing. And then this piece, when I'm going to take the limit, this piece goes to 0. And this is the piece that's going to infinity. But it's going to infinity in a way that I understand in a growth that's linear, right? So I have this linear growth here for this oblique asymptote. So I can kind of recognize or understand a little bit better the behavior as I'm, the end behavior as I'm going to infinity. Okay. Um, and then I have this one final problem. 
Um, I, I think it was the limit as x goes to infinity of 4x cubed plus 3x minus 7 over 2x plus 5. Okay, that's a 7. And again, if I do this trick and look at what's happening, uh, and divide by x cubed. two over x squared plus five over x cubed. Again, this is going to a solid number in the numerator, and then this thing is getting closer and closer to zero. So I think as a ratio, it should be going to infinity here. Okay. Okay, so, but then again, I would say, if you want to look at this another way, I'm going to do this division, 4x cubed plus, again, I'm going to put in this placeholder. Do you see how there's not an x squared term in my numerator? So anytime a term is missing, you have to put in a 0x squared as a placeholder. And then I'm going to do this long division, okay? So what times 2x makes 4x cubed? So I need two extra x's, right? And then a 2, so I get 2, uh, that's not what it is, 4x cubed plus 10x squared, okay? I'm going to switch signs, subtract, and I'm going to get 10, negative 10x squared plus 3x, and I go back up, and I say, okay, what times 2x makes negative 10x? So, oh, I need a negative, actually. It's too fast with that positive. Negative 5, and I need another x, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to multiply the negative 5x times 2x. That's negative 10x squared. Negative 5x times 5 is a minus 25x. I'm going to subtract everything, so I'm going to change signs. And then the 10x is canceled. Again, on every stage of this, if these two don't cancel, you have done something wrong. That is the sign that you have chosen the right multiplier. You're always getting rid of this term. Okay, and then you get 28x minus 7. And then one more time, because still my, denot my degree in this kind of remainder is, I need it to be smaller than the degree in this um, piece out front. In, that came from the denominator, right? So I'm going to, what do I multiply 2x by to get 28x? And that should be 14. So I'll do 28x. And 14 times 5 should be, what is that, 70? Is that right? That makes sense. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to subtract again. Negative. So I get negative 27. Okay. And now what does this mean? It means 4x cubed plus 3x minus 7 all over 2x plus 5 is equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 14 minus and 27 over 2x plus 5. Okay. So now again, in the limit, if I'm taking the limit of these two, and I might just add that right here, It's easy to see that this side of the limit should go, my, my right here, to infinity. So if my math lab asks you for what the limit is, it's definitely infinity here, right? It's going up to positive infinity. But then, and this is not called the oblique asymptote. So oblique is only when the quotient is like a linear function with like non-zero slope, right? Horizontal lines have zero slope. So maybe with non-zero slope, right? So I have this. So this is not an oblique asymptote.
because it's not a line. But it also does tell me, I want to say this, but I do know that the end behavior of the graph of this function, 4x cubed plus 3x minus 7 over 2x plus 5, looks like this quotient. So it behaves in a quadratic function, or behaves in a quadratic manner. Right? So for sure, well, like, I can really say the long-term growth is quadratic, right? It has kind of a quadratic growth weight. That's how I fast I expect this to grow, kind of as x goes to infinity and as x goes to minus infinity, okay? Now, I might make one more comment, and that is we talked about these four cases, right? Um, so let's say I have a quotient um, and the degree here, uh, um, a rational function, the degree here on top is n, and the degree here on top is m. Okay, just so I can talk about it. So when the degree, when the degree on top is bigger, uh, let's do this first. When the degree on bottom is bigger, then the horizontal asymptote should be equal to zero. And you should use this dividing rule. Mm, let's, like, we talked about two ways. Um, the first way is divide by, like, biggest degree. There's one possibility. And the second one is long division. So I don't want you to get those clue, you know. So you should use tactic one. Right? There's no, there's no slant asymptote. Okay, the second one is when they're equal to each other and the horizontal asymptote is equal to like the coefficients, like coefficient over coefficient. You'll see this in the patterns. Again, you should use tactic one. The last two is where, oh, one of them is where m is equal to where the degree on top is one more than the degree on bottom. So that's n is equal to m plus one, right? So then there's a slant asymptote. So you can do tactic one, but you kind of know that it's gonna be, the limit should be infinity, and then do long division. So if you wanna just do long division, maybe I would suggest that. But like, you can do tactic one, it doesn't, I mean, hurt. Okay, and now where n is bigger than m, um, honestly, you can do tactic one if you just need to show the division. If you want to know about growth, use long division. Both of these, I want to make sure that you understand, there's no horizontal asymptote, right? So this one where the degree on top is one more has a slant asymptote, no horizontal asymptote. In this case here, there's no horizontal asymptote, no slant asymptote. Maybe I'll write that down. No horizontal asymptote, no slant. Okay. Okay, so I think I put together some homework for you, but um, let me know if you have questions.